uh give give just a brief like for people who don't know you how did you get into writing about christian dating just what's the story that brought you from the beginning to where you are now in uh in qu as quick as you can not super quick but you know what i mean um uh okay so basically my mom passed away from brain cancer and uh in my grieving process i I basically moved in with my dad, had so much depression and anxiety that I had to quit my job. Um, I was running a business also at the time, had to stop that. And uh, I had a relationship that ended. And prior to that, I had been in YWAM, which is the hilarious dating story that will be very relatable for everyone. And that didn't work out. And so I was just at like the pit uh, in my view of my life. So I started writing, writing and journaling has always been like healing for me. And I started publishing my stuff online and it was about, you know, serious things, but I had very sarcastic undertones of like, that I, that I noticed that I would use. And, and then that kind of became more into funny stuff. And then I just realized Christian dating is so weird. And so I was like, there's so much weird stuff going on. And so i I just, it kind of flourished like that. But one quick story, um, after my mom passed, I, I didn't go to church for a while. And so I went uh, to church after uh, a few years and I walk in and, you know, it was like, it took all my energy and strength to like get there. And I walk in and there's this lady and she's like, um, oh, hi, welcome. And I'm like, oh, hi. And she's like, are you married? And I'm like, no. And she's like, oh, that's okay, sweetie. And I was like, I'm going to kill her. Like it took everything to show up here right now. But, uh, anyway, so yeah, so that's kind of like how it started. And then I, I noticed people wanted to talk about it and then that expanded to other things. And yeah. No, that's great. That's so good. Um, so I would love to talk through some of those reasons that I said at the beginning and just get your perspective on them. Um, first, do you think it is true? So it sounds like from at least that old lady, do you think that churches put a higher value on marriage over singleness and dating, right? And is this a good or a bad thing from your perspective? Uh, I think definitely, I think it's changing now because the conversations like have been evolving, but absolutely. Like I do think so. I think like it was, I was raised in the church and it was kind of like grilled in my brain. Like the goal is to get married. And like, when you're married, then you can like, like have ministry together and do missions together and be leaders together. And um, yeah. So I think absolutely like it, it's like the being the superpower couple Christian couple is like the ideal. And that uh, is actually not necessarily more, valuable than just being the awesome single person or, you know, divorced or widowed or whatever. Yeah. No, that's so true. I was in a meeting where I literally, I was talking with a pastor from another church and he said straight up, he said, I know that the Bible says being single is good, but I will very rarely hire a non-married pastor. Mm -hmm. And he's like, just as a form of wisdom, I don't want, you know, something to happen. Mm -hmm. And it's like, something could happen if they were in a marriage too like it's not yeah. one is so i get so annoyed by that yeah yeah i think maybe there's a misconception that there's something wrong with someone because they're single as if they don't have a choice in the matter and it's like i choose to i i'm choosing to be single right now you know there's nothing yeah. wrong with me like i can stand up there and speak just like you two you know so yeah no, that's really true. I, uh, th there was a, our, the director of women's ministry at my last church, she was like in her fifties and she was single and people were always like thought something was wrong. Like mm -hmm. there must be some issue with her that she's single. And she was just like, no, I just never found the right person. And you mm -hmm. know, I'm happy. And you know, she lives a very fulfilled life. So, mm -hmm. so I think, yeah, it, it seems that way. So wh what do you think about the idea of the, the standards? Let's talk a little bit about the standards that we place. Cause so I've been listening to a bunch of podcasts and, mm -hmm. and reading some books about this in preparation for this talk. And I, I heard this one quote that they said, don't lower your standards, extend your patience. And so that sounds like wise on the surface. 
But right. then I always have to think, well, what are your standards? Like, what is it the things right. that you're looking for? And mm -hmm. are those like actually good things? And when you ask people, why have you turned down some people in your life? And it's, it's for the most ridiculous reasons. So, so what, what are your thoughts on just that whole idea? I think my standards, I think standards like is very hard to define because we're all individuals with like, you know, created very uh, uniquely. So something for me that's important may not be important for someone else and that that's okay. Um, but for me, what's very important is like solid character. And I think that that takes work, that takes, uh, you know, humility, that takes people going through trials. And so a standard for me is like someone that I know has a really reputable character. Um, and uh, yeah, so so people do tell me they're like oh you need to lower your standards or and i'm like i'm fine like i meet people i choose i i i'm able to create those standards for myself without someone telling me what they need to be you know yes of course there's very like, true. It's like don't you know your standards shouldn't be like a very awful toxic person but i mean <laughs> you know like i i it doesn't we i, I think christian culture sometimes wants to find a formula and there is no formula uh you know relationship with jesus there isn't a formula in that either you know it's a relationship so i think that's part of it no that's so good i i totally agree so we're getting some good stuff in the chat uh mason said i hate that to fill my fulfill my purpose and calling to be in ministry is stopped by pastors who want me to be married first mason i feel you buddy that's that's hard that's hard um so do you think have you seen any churches that equip their people well for dating or have in my estimation most of the churches i've been a part of have not done a great job other than giving those kind of three rules that i said right don't date an unchristian be intentional and don't have sex before you're married and outside of that it's like well how do you have a good relationship have you had churches that have given good advice and and like good leading in that way are there, are there like pastors on here? <laughs> You're safe. <laughs> um, you know, when I really think about it, I don't, I don't think so. Like I, I have found very great advice, like through solid couples. I know I've met in church, even like, um, outside of church. Like I have, I have this couple who is just so solid and the, and he loves and respects my friend so much. And she does him and he, uh, you know, it, I learned a lot from watching them. And I think meeting people in church and outside, like that's the best way, like uh, to communicate and find out how a healthy relationship operates and functions and what's needed for marriage or like listening to a 65 year old couple, like the old couples that are photoed, like holding hands. You're like, tell me, tell me about this, you know? <laughs> um, but I do think that there are podcasts and uh, church related that, that do give good advice. Just not no, that's true. That's very true. Uh, Jen said, if it exists, holler because dot, 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 LOL. <laughs> right. I know. I don't, I, yeah, no, not really. <laughs> but I know. Andrew said, uh, Andrew said, do you think the pressure to get married leads to more unhappy relationships? What are your thoughts on that? Yeah. I was in YWAM uh, seven years ago. And Tell people what YWAM is if they don't know what that oh, is. Because okay. I know YWAM, but that's some insider right. Christian. That's inside. Uh, yeah. Okay. So it's youth with a mission. So it's a missions ministry. Uh, and you start with like a six month discipleship school. Um, but the the acronym young, it's they, people say young women after men, like people go there, meet, get married real fast. And it's like this hyper pressurized culture. And so um, my friend, she was dating someone. They're now married. They dated uh, four, three years before they got married because um, she wanted a foundation of friendship. And uh, she said that within the first two months, someone came up to her and was like, did you get a sign from God that so-and-so is your husband? She's like, no, like, can we stop with it? Like, no, <laughs> you know, it is. And so, yes, I think there is a pressure and people then get married. They're not ready. They don't know each other. They don't even know how to file taxes. And they're, you know, <laughs> just, it, I, I don't think that it needs to be so rushed, but obviously sex 
is often something that uh, is the reason that people will give to get married. So there is this, there's this issue, right? Um, and character, man, like if you have solid character and you have a solid friendship, a marriage is a lot easier. Yeah, that's so, so true. Uh, okay, so we got some other good things in the chat. Uh, how do you navigate friendships between guys and girls where one person is having feelings, but the other person is not? Have you been in that scenario ever on either uh, side? Yeah, uh, DTR, define that relationship. <laughs> DTR. I thought I was so clever, by the way, when I started and I was like the DTR blog, this is so smart. <laughs> like this acronym, like, I just, and now I'm like, uh, <laughs> people are like, is it the dater blog? Like they don't know. And I'm like, yeah, it's define the relationship. Anyways. Uh, I think I, uh, communication is very important. So we have to be honest, have vulnerable conversations. Vulnerability is very hard. Um, but it is so healthy and good and it produces results that you'll either like find out someone's not into you so you can move on. Um, I think it's hard to stay friends as a woman. I just know we're kind of crazy sometimes. And like, if you're into a guy and he's not into you, it's just, I don't know. I think uh, that may be difficult. So you, you may have to, I don't know, distance yourself a little or just, just like, we, we have a term in the recovery center. It's like radical acceptance. Like you have to radically accept that this person does not want to be with you. And mm. if you can do that, then, then you can, you know, stay friends as you want. No, that's really good. That's really good. Uh, okay. Some other good stuff has been coming through. Uh, Kate said, most of marriage is filing taxes together, to be honest. That's good. Uh, <laughs> Jen said, so I know couples that have gotten married young because of sex, because they, you know, wanted to like actually get married because of that. And now in their thirties, they got a divorce and accepted that they were married too young. I think that's very true. I think a lot of people can rush into things. Uh, John Schrader said, seems counterintuitive to push for marriage before one knows themselves. Typical saying, got to love yourself before you can love someone else romantically. So what, what would be your thought? Cause someone else said this to me. Uh, Cause I, I, I was sharing some of these ideas. I usually verbally process them before I give them to everyone else to make sure that I'm not like completely off the mark. Mm -hmm. But someone was like, well, what about dating as like an experience builder, right? Like I'm, I'm dating people. I'm not really in a place where I want to get married, but I want to date around so that I can get practice dating. What, what would be your thoughts for someone who would say something like that? Uh, okay. Well, I know people who do that and they do it because they need a lot of attention and they get it <laughs> from the wrong way. Right. And I know people that uh, are just super extroverted and love meeting people and like love the fact that there's a dating app that they can like meet someone, go to coffee twice and it didn't work out, but they found the person super in like interesting. And um, I think it comes back down to the heart like uh, I think yeah if you're just dating around um because there's something in you that needs that that's something in you that is what needs to be addressed um ultimately I mean like who like I just like having a boyfriend I feel like and dating it it creates a lot of anxiety you have to go through a lot I'm just always like I don't know how y'all date so many people like are you anxious? Like, is it, you know, that's a lot of people to navigate. Um, yeah, but I did want to say one thing um, back back to uh, the topic before that I feel like is important to say. I, I did read this big pastor. He said, he wrote something and said, you know, in our culture now, people are getting married later and this and that. And he was saying that in a negative way. And I think it's important to note that there's nothing wrong with getting married later there isn't anything wrong with being 34 or later, or whatever people determine that to be. Everyone's different. So, yeah. No, that's so I true. That's, it. <laughs> that's so true. That's, I hear that so much, like in the thing, they say 50% of marriages end in divorce, which is like another statistic that I think is not actually true. If, if I, I know everyone but, just says it, but like, where, who, where did that come from? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It may have been true at some point. I don't think it's yeah. anymore. I'm pretty sure the divorce rate is actually on the decline. So, so I don't know, but I, I think you're totally right. And I, and uh, I was just going to say something to, to that point. Uh, yeah, so I think that the whole idea of getting more experience through dating, like if you're if you're in friendships with 
-hmm. people of the opposite sex and you're doing all those things like you're working on yourself like that's the stuff that's gonna matter like the dating experience is kind of like a made-up experience anyways right because like you can either yeah. be super super shallow and like you're just you know you go on a date you don't talk to them for a week and you go on another date you don't talk to them for a week or you just like pretend you're married but you're not married and so it's still like feels like an extended job interview it's like if you had been in a job right. interview for yeah. Yeah, four yeah. years and it's like and then the, the the funny thing is that so many people do not understand like the the way that the dating relationship feels the moment that you get married it completely changes gears and there's like stats about this and a lot of people a lot of my married friends say that they just felt a way like stable i don't know safe something changed they do say it. like yeah. you know a lot of people that do say that yeah no that's so true okay so we've got a lot more good stuff coming through the chat deb said dating in the christian circle has been a very small pond experience for me is there ever a chance of dating outside the christian circle being more beneficial i've heard the argument of spreading christianity to other non-believers through relationships thoughts on that argument like the uh, missionary dating that's the phrase right no that's so weird like <laughs> the name is weird. like you just want to date him because he's hot and he's you know not christian like but and just admit it just and not like I'm trying to save him like uh, uh, <laughs> i made a joke i was like man this last year at christians i don't know we we didn't look that great this last year so i was like i'm wondering if anyone knows any like nice jewish men like you know do you, you know maybe i'll you know just a nice kind jew like it, i i think uh like you said um i don't think that it is a sin to date outside uh of the christian church i just think that motives and um like who the person is and because there's a lot of people very unhealthy people men and women within church uh so that you shouldn't marry you know um but yeah no that's really good that's really good uh Let's see what else. Any other questions could coming through a lot of good chat going back and forth. Uh, too many pastors portray their marriages so perfect because God placed this person in their life. This creates such a dangerous narrative for anyone who is single over the age of 25. It makes you think that God is withholding something from you or you're not good enough or not ready to have a partner. Lots of self guilt, lots of doubting yourself, even when you want to put yourself out there. Also, there was someone who put in the chat earlier. I think I lost it. Oh, uh, do you think God has chosen the exact person you should marry or do you think he gives us free will to determine that what are your thoughts on that whole like the soulmate concept yeah i think it's both i think if there's no formula so for some for one person like they're like we don't know their whole life story and like in their whole life story it may may make perfect sense that god's you know they felt like god spoke to them and they ended up marrying the person but that doesn't mean that that is a now a rule across the board that needs to happen for every Christian. Um, I think that it is a choice. And I think that God also is involved. He orchestrates all of our lives in all kinds of ways that we don't know. Um, and we, we want so badly to know. And we're, I just don't think that we will ever fully know on this side. So I think it's both. No, that's good. But, that's a really but everyone good wants like the sign, the word, the thing. And it, it's because it's vulnerable to make a choice. But we have to learn to like do both together. No, that's so true. That's really good. Uh, Omid said, I'm a recent Christian and I'm wondering what I'm in for when it comes to dating Christians. It's a lot of new expectation and culture I'm not as familiar with. I'm worried about things like all my first dates feeling like job interviews for testing if I'm Christian enough. Omid, let me just say to you, uh, this was like a, a big thing that I, I was talking to my sister about this. So both my sister and I married our spouses after dating all through high school and through college. So we did uh -huh. the long haul dating, uh -huh. right? High school sweethearts, that whole thing, long distance college experience where was, we were like six and a half hours away. My, uh, my list of things when I started dating, you know, I was like, I had three things. I said, I wanna find someone that I think is good looking. I want someone to be a Christian and I don't want them to get trashed like all the time. And so, <laughs> My wife, she, she met those things and I was like, this is it. And so, uh, you know, there's ups and downs, but I think that people, and I've heard Christians say like, 
I love this girl, but I'm a Calvinist and she's an Arminian. And I'm like, bro, this is not, that's not the dividing line, right? If you both love Jesus, like it doesn't matter how far you are in your theological journey. And you know, you know what I'm saying? Like you, you've said a couple of times, right? It's about the heart. It's about that. So Omid, if you feel like you're on a job interview and someone's quizzing you about theology, maybe that's and not the person for you. And your theology grows and changes so much. Like my theology from studying and then living and then re like it is, it, it's a constant moving factor. And I think I was recently thinking about, I'm like ministry of Jesus. He said, love the poor, you know, the widows, the oppressed. And I'm like, that, that actually is a just Christian values. That is like basic human values, you know? So uh, oftentimes I, it's like, well, what is it exactly that you're valuing in your Christian faith? Um, and what is, what is someone else? Probably you have the same core values. It's just, uh, these dividing lines. Yeah. Like, I think, I think we create a lot of division. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Okay, uh, Elizabeth says, I wonder how this goal of a Christian marriage impacts girls growing up in the church. It gives the impression that will, they will not be enough without a husband. How, how would you reframe that for people to, to remind them that that's not what the Bible says, right? That the Bible does not say the ultimate goal is to get a spouse. Yeah, I think the New Testament, there are a lot of women who um, Jesus spoke with. There's a lot of uh, women that we we don't necessarily know if they were married or not, and they played big roles in the Bible. Uh, and um, there there's so much more in life like that we can do than just put a focus on being married. Like obviously we want that. Like I want that. Um, but my my identity is not whether or not I'm single or married. It's just like a state. It's just like a adjective, you know? And I think the church has made it an identity. Like, hi, I am, you know, this is, I'm pastor so-and-so, this is my hot wife, this is our four children, this is, you know? And like, that's, that's great. But like, you're so much more too than that. But I think it, yeah, obviously like cherish those things. Um, but no, like it's not, it doesn't need to be an identity uh, for people. The hot wife thing has got to end. It's like, they're like, it's a hot wife, but don't lust. You're like, yes, here's my, <laughs> here's my hot wife. Don't objectify her, but here she is. And she's it's smoking. So that's what they always say. Yeah. It's so easy to make jokes. This is why <laughs> this, it's that. That's why the funny stuff took off. It's just so easy. Like <laughs> we're so weird. <laughs> Christians are very, very weird. They're very, very weird. Okay. Uh, Mike says another hard about Christian dating. A uh, hard part of Christian dating is that we seem to have all these phases. It can go from just talking to going on dates, to being engaged, uh, to, you know, being official, to being serious, to being engaged. All this different terminology can be seriously confusing and honestly a burden in the way for some people pursuing a dating relationship. Mike, I don't know if you have a question in there, but that's very true. There are a lot of, <laughs> it's a, it's there's a lot of phases. It's a good rant. It's a good rant. For it's like sure. it, I mean, I think that's like dating. Like, is what are we? That's why you, the DTR is like people are like, oh, it's you have one DTR. You're like everyone that I know who are in very solid relationships. They're like, you basically have one every week. Like, you just communicate. How are you feeling? How you know? How are you feeling about yeah. it? Like, and and that's like the key. It yeah, sucks. Yeah. They. <laughs> So uh, we are just about out of time, but Christina, thank you so much for coming on. Thank um, it was, you. It's been a blast. I think you've shared so many wise things. So if everyone can say thank you in the chat uh, for Christina coming on, and then um, people can find you at, it's at the DTR blog. So mm -hmm. Emma or someone, if you could drop that back in the chat on Instagram, I promise you follow her on Instagram or Twitter. It is so funny. But she also posts some, you post some really spicy stuff too. Some I've good. been getting spicy. I know. I, I so know. I've been, I've been resharing and I'm like, man, there's some really good stuff in there. So thank oh, you so much. Thank uh, you guys so much, man. There's then, so much you could do with this topic. <laughs> Get started. Maybe we'll have you back on if, if we can convince you to, to dive in a little bit more. Some of these other fun aspects. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, okay.